just a moment and the circulation like this around the hurricane and now watch this is uh, this evening now watch as we go forward in time and you see by noontime tomorrow those winds have overspread all of the big cities of the northeast from the uh, Carolinas all the way up to New England and it's only going to get windier through the day so you should not plan to be out and around by tomorrow because it's just going to get worse and worse and look at this by 9 p.m. tomorrow according to the National Hurricane Center forecast, plus or minus that time. These are the hurricane force gusts. So the yellow is the area where damage begins, where tree limbs come down, where where it's uh, dangerous to be outside. And then this is where you can get real serious problems. And then the water is going to get pushed up, of course. How long is it going to last? Tuesday morning, still under the, the uh, strong winds. By Wednesday morning, it's drastically reduced, but still going to be quite breezy through the day on Monday. So here are the effects talking about the New York, New Jersey uh, and, and uh, southern New England areas. Now look at the winds coming in here. This is Monday evening and what that means is the water is going to get pushed up against Long Island, uh, the south shore of Long Island, in Long Island Sound, down toward New York City and at the same time we have this wind spreading over inland so we have wind alerts of every variety, high wind alerts, uh, hurricane wind alerts all across Across different parts of the Northeast and flood alerts for the entire area to the west of the Boston metro area but extending down to include the Washington area as well. Talking about specific water rise, look along the coast here and I want you to focus on the north side of Long Island Sound with 6 to 11 feet of water and also around New York City. All right, as you mentioned, the winds are already blowing in uh, North Carolina on Cape Hatteras. Julie Martin has been there being battered and I can see it's raining as well. Julie. Yeah, it is relentless here along the Outer Banks. In fact, we've been seeing tropical storm gusts since about midnight, and there's just no letting up. They come and go, but right now I'm a little bit protected by the Murphy's home here. They have been kind enough to let us use their, their property. I want to take you out to the Atlantic, though. Now, if you had just come down here, say, a couple months from now, you'd say, oh, what? I don't see anything missing. Well, it's gone, and that really protects these beachfront properties. It, it couldn't handle the force of Sandy, but now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have additional storms, likely these nor'easters that we roll towards the winter, any kind of coastal storm, it's not going to take as much to get water back into these uh, properties. Look at this parking meter. Gives you an idea visually of uh, what kind of sand we have across the uh, town here. And as you go about two blocks inland, it turns into the Atlantic again. The water that didn't go back out into the sea is sitting there and trying to figure out how we can uh, get out of town. And there's that sinkhole here on Ocean Avenue. Let's go uh, back now to the studio, Atlanta and Mike Bettis. All right, Mike. State supported shelters, two at Rutgers, two at Monmouth, and one at Menin Arena in Morris Township, New Jersey. We are in the process of opening a sixth shelter at the Rutgers Athletic Center that could support nearly 2,000 people. We want to make sure people have enough food and water for a while, which is why we are working with the Salvation Army and the American Red Cross to bring in mobile kitchens to serve thousands of meals. Box lunches are being delivered to state shelters today. We are also using FEMA food and water resources. The National Guard has deployed and staged soldiers and airmen at the Freehold and Woodbridge Armories for support of state-supported shelter facilities if needed. There are a vast number of New Jerseyans today without power. In fact, we currently have 2.4 million New Jersey households without power. This is, just so you understand the order of magnitude here, this is twice the number of impacted households from, as Hurricane Irene. Hurricane Irene was 1.2 million impacted households. This is 2.4 million impacted households. 1.2 million of the 2.4 million are from PSE and G. 935,000 from JCP&L. 195,000 from Atlantic City Electric. And 45,000 from Orange and Rockland. During Hurricane Irene, um, restoration took eight days for full restoration. For Hurricane Sandy, the full restoration may in fact take longer. Full damage assessment will not be complete until 24 to 48 hours due to some of the weather delays. They cannot develop the time frame for restoration until damage assessments are underway and obviously these difficult weather conditions are making this more of a challenge. 
However, the utility companies have continued to reach out to other states for assistance, and we are expecting additional linemen, uh, servicemen, and tree clearing workers from states as far away as Texas and Indiana, and even folks coming in to us from Canada. It will remain extremely dangerous in areas where trees and wires are down. Ask people to use extreme caution. Assume that any wire you see down is a live wire, and please do not go near it. There are currently 173 incidents statewide involving highway lane closures. Most of these closures are the results of downed trees, utility poles, and flooding. Closures are statewide with the highest concentration in Monmouth County, but no county in the state has been spared, so avoid travel unless absolutely necessary. Uh, I want to say this now to private employers. Um, unless you can identify a safe route for your employees to get to work, I'd ask you to allow them to stay home from work today. We've deployed 800 employees from NJDOT to clear these incidents, and we were able to open, as you already know, the Garden State Parkway this morning for its full length. New Jersey Turnpike is open from exits 1 to exit 10. And that, of course, was Governor Chris Christie, and we are waiting for Mayor Michael, Michael Bl A pretty big drop-off where it's changed. So I'm about six feet tall, and the beach is up about six feet, so the water literally just chewed along that shore. And if you look out where this house is, that was lawn during the storm. Uh, so someone on Sunday morning was getting ready, maybe sitting out on their deck, and their whole front yard, their whole deck, all of that was taken away by the ocean. And the wave angle, you notice how it's straight in right now. Again, I don't know if you can see it very well. It was more diagonal during the storm. And it was that angle that it kept moving along the shoreline that really helped to take away a lot of that sand. All right, meteorologist Eric Fisher, we certainly appreciate it. And we could see everything perfect. So kudos uh, to good. the camera, guys. It was looking good. We appreciate that. And thank you for all of your hard work and putting into perspective uh, just the extent of the damage. And remember, Eric's in one location. This is an enormous area that we're talking about. State, so many states, New England, all the way down uh, to uh, the northeast, throughout the mid-Atlantic, into the southeast. And again, we're looking live again at Eric's shot. While we still have the daylight, we want to take advantage of that. And Eric was doing a great job of showing us right there. You see how the sand just goes and drops off. That has all been eroded away. And he said there was grass right there, and now it's gone. But you can see that the waves coming in now, not nearly what they were like yesterday. You remember yesterday, if you're watching here on the Weather Channel, there was even a, a brown tinge to some of the water, especially in New Jersey. But again, we're looking here live in New England. You see people walking around, stopping to take pictures, and it really is an amazing sight. You, you walk around and you see people's homes or their, their summer cottages, and you're just your heart goes out for them when you see the destruction, because it's hard to imagine when you see uh, so much sand and land, they, it, it buffers uh, a home from the ocean, and then all of a sudden it's gone. And that's what's happening right now as the tide is coming back in, high tide at 9 o'clock. And so that's what we're seeing. Uh, we're seeing those live pictures, the, the ocean not nearly what it was yesterday, but the difference now, there's just not as much beach. It's gone. It's either out to sea or it's been pushed inland. And we've been seeing a lot of the pictures, especially in New Jersey, where the sand has gone in blocks and blocks away from the ocean, carried in by all of that water. And right now on the phone is Robert De Silva. He's joining us from Union Beach, New Jersey. And Robert, we understand you submitted a series of pretty impressive photos of Sandy's Wrath. We talk about what we're looking at here. Um, pretty much that's the overall beachfront devastation and some of the inland. Um, right now it's actually they actually had a lot of help come in. A lot of the Mercer County Sheriff's Department, they were all there afternoon clearing up a lot of it. And so, what was your reaction when you saw this? Uh, I mean, I was there for the 92 storm, and this is, like, devastating. I mean, a lot of people have lived there all their lives, so it's a big, big hit to everyone. What, what sticks out in your mind the most? We look at some of the pictures, and frankly, with the destruction like this and the damage to some of the pictures, it's hard to make out really what we're looking at. But what sticks out in your mind? Uh, I mean, we've all been through storms in Union Beach, and no one, no one expected this much devastation. No one, you know, everyone's equally devastated. 
Well, really quick, we're looking at a house that looks like half of it's there. It's like it's been erased. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, that's one of the houses that's the, directly behind that is actually the bay. So that, I mean, there's houses like that all over the place. There's houses that are just completely missing from their foundations. I mean, I have half in someone else's house in my backyard on my fence. Well, this doesn't even seem to make sense here. I mean, we're looking at, it's the yellow house that we're looking at, Robert. And, I mean, what, was it gutted on the inside? I mean, the, the, the half no. of the house is missing. Yeah, that's just, I mean, it's one of the houses that face the water and how it's still standing, no one knows. So how many houses can, can you guess that, that you've seen that, that are similar to this? Um, Similar to that one, not many, but, I mean, there's, the houses are either completely flooded out or completely destroyed. And how much how much walking or driving have you done? What's the extent that you've personally seen? Um, Union Beach is only about one square mile. I got there super early this morning. I pretty much walked the entire town. Devastation goes all over the place, closer to the beachfront. More total loss. You go around, more flooding, a lot of debris. I mean, it completely varies from section to section. No area is completely the same. It's just really devastating um right now I'm, I'm looking at this picture and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it is okay this i think it looks like i see a lot of insulation robert is that the foundation was this one of the homes that was ripped off the foundation it looks like a cinder block foundation uh right you know, now i don't have you don't know right now i'm not really sure i don't okay. i don't have power or tv so i'm not really okay. sure i mean a lot of the pictures are just cinder blocks with the houses pushed off yeah some that's, of them are just foundations Okay, that's what we're looking at right now. And have you, did you, have you talked to anybody else? What is the common reaction from people, if you've talked to anybody? Uh, I've talked to a lot of people, and most are in shock. Like I said, we've, most of us from Union Beach have experienced a lot of storms, and none of us expected this. All right. And Hurricane, hurricane in the, the Northeastern 92 did not do nearly as much water damage as this did. Robert De Silva from Union Beach, we certainly appreciate you sharing these pictures with us. Absolutely amazing to see the destruction and the power of what the water can do. We talk about how uh, storm surge is a huge deal, extremely dangerous, and you can see what happens right there. Let's go to our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, right now. And Dr. Forbes, were you looking at those pictures? And if so, what's your reaction to seeing that? Yeah, it's incredible, the damage from the storm surge. And I have another perspective here in terms of the damage from the winds, how expansive it was. Unfortunately, we had said there would be damage all the way from the Great Lakes to New England. And each one of these blue reports here is a report of wind damage, even some down into the Appalachians. So that's going to take quite a while to restore eight and a half million customers without power approximately.